sometimes we see things for what we think they should be, but in reality, what they actually are, are two different things. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds. It's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide. Your host and the Appraiser Coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome back to the program, everyone. Dustin Harris hanging out once again with you. Appreciate you joining me if you are new to the program. I appreciate you finding us, and I hope you will find uh, some information here that will be helpful to you. Want to pause, as we always do, and remind you that we are sponsored by three great companies. One of them is Working RE Magazine. Working RE is where I go to get all kinds of... In fact, just this morning, I was actually reading an article from Working RE. Uh, Super informative article. Thank you, Isaac Peck, for writing that. Isaac, of course, is the editor over there. Folks, if you're not following Working RE, you should be. It's workingre.com. Again, workingre.com. A la mode is where I go to find how to be more efficient with my business, something we're going to talk a little bit about today. Well, a lot bit about today. Alamode.com or 800 Alamode. And of course, Data Master saving appraisers lots and lots of time on every report, about uh, 45 minutes per report, actually. Check them out. Go to datamasterusa.com. Again, it's datamasterusa.com. Well, folks, it's a Monday when I'm recording this. And um, it is a great day. I woke up this morning excited to go to work. I had a couple of uh, and I, by the way, I use work in uh, with parentheses or uh, rather with uh, quotation marks. I don't, uh, <laughs> I just don't see what I do as work. I'm sorry. I, I, I see some of my colleagues and I see what they're doing with their lives. And I'm feeling pretty darn good about what I get to do with mine. But I woke up this morning and it's Monday. Folks, I have the same complex that you have on Monday. Sometimes it's hard to motivate. Sometimes it's hard to get out again. And I find that when I don't do something fun on the weekend, actually, it seems like an opposite of what you would think. That when you do something uh, fun on the weekend, it would be harder to get back to work. But I actually find it the exact opposite. We're going to be talking about these things uh, called dichotomies today. And this is one of those. It's one of those things that if I if I lay around and maybe watch some Netflix and maybe do a little honeydew here and a little honeydew, but I really don't feel productive and I really, really, really don't get a chance to do some R&R, that it is so tough for me to drag myself back to quote unquote work on Monday. But when I have and take some time to do some fun things over the weekend. It just seems like my body is renewed, my spirit's renewed, my brain, my mental capacity, my everything just feels on top of things. And I know there's social science out there to support that when we take time to play, that we take time to recreate, that we take time for ourselves and to relax, boy, we are so much better for it. I recently read about a an individual, an appraiser who is working, I think 70, 65, 70 hours a week. Folks, I've been there. I've done that. I was motivated by money like you can't believe in years past. And and I did it at the sacrifice of my health, at the sacrifice of my spouse and kids and everything else. And I, folks, if you were to ask me during that time, I would absolutely deny all of that. I would say, oh, no, my wife comes first. Oh, no, my kids come first. Oh, no, I take time to play. Oh, no, I live my life. But I'm telling you, folks, now that I'm on the other side of the fence, I can absolutely testify that I was running myself into the ground. Folks, there is a better way to do things. Let me share with you a story, and we're going to connect this with our business today. And so I, I, I hope that you'll stay with me throughout the program, because I think there's some really important principles to be learned today that I think will benefit all of us here. Let me tell you a story. Yesterday, woke up, my, uh, my wife and uh, two of my children went out of town yesterday on a little road trip, taking my son uh, to run an errand. And uh, it was just me and my other son and my daughter. My daughter was bored out of her mind. She's been working for me lately, and uh, she, uh, she needed a break. Uh, it's, it's been a high paced lifestyle the last little while we've had high volume. We are trying to keep up with things just like all of you out there are trying to do. And she needed a break and she said, dad, let's go do something fun. And I said, okay, what you got in mind? And she uh, rattled off a couple of things. Well, you know what? We're still shut down for, uh, you know, the pandemic for, you know, the time being anyway, I, when I say shut down, I mean, things are scaled back. So, you know, going to a movie, not happening, right? Uh, some of these other things we normally could do just not happening because those things aren't open. They're not running. And, you know, doing something outside didn't sound fun either because we woke up 
up. And the high that day was supposed to be 60. The wind was blowing. And when you get, you know, 40s, 50s on an Idaho day with the wind, you had that wind on top of it. Folks, it feels, it literally feels like 30s and 40s uh, rather than 40s and 50s. And it just was not warm enough to go out and do something. We had lots of ideas on things we could do, uh, hiking and biking and and fishing and uh, you name it. All kinds of great things to do in Idaho. But going outside just did not sound like a fun idea until my daughter landed on a great, great opportunity. She said, well, you know what? Why don't we take a road trip? And you know what? I'm fine with that. In, 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 in days past, when I was spending a lot of time on the road doing inspections and comp pictures and everything else, um, that might not have sounded too fun to me, right, to, to get in the car again on the weekend where I've spent most of the week in the car. But anymore, that's really not my role. Anymore, I've moved into this place where I'm more running my business rather than working a lot in my business. Now, certainly I do some in my business as well. There's certain clients that just require that I'm the one out there doing the inspection. And I'm the one out there doing the comp photos. And in those cases, I'm out there doing those things. You know, we'll, we'll comply in order to, to keep our clients happy. But anymore, it's not really been that that taxing on me. And so this idea of taking a road trip was great if, of course, we could find something that the road trip was worth. And so we brainstormed together and we came up with an idea that we would go to the Salmon Valley, which is, by the way, three and a half, four hours one way to get to. But it's absolutely beautiful country. They call it the Copper Basin. It is called that because it is gold sand, gorgeous, steep hills, lots of deer, elk, moose, bears, pine trees, quakies, Lots of shale and uh, and just beautiful, beautiful straight up and down mountains. And, of course, the lovely Salmon River. Well, you know, that normally would not sound like a fun thing to do on a 60-degree day. That, by the way, you get in that country, it becomes a 40-degree day very quickly. I mean, your elevation rises from, we live at about 4,800 feet above sea level. That area is more like seven, 8,000. And, of course, Mount Bora is in that area as well, which is closer to 13,000. And uh, it's cold. It's cold. And it's miserable. And uh, But she said, don't worry, Dad. I got an idea. Okay, great. I'm all ears. And she said, she says, let's go to the valley and let's, uh, let's go to some hot springs and uh, go soak in some hot springs. And I'm thinking, okay, this sounds like a cool idea. I like this idea. This, is, this to me is worth the trip because it doesn't matter how cold and miserable it is outside. In those hot springs, it can get, you know, over 100 degrees. It is, it is awesome. And the minerals and everything else is just fun. So it was her, my 22-year-old daughter, myself, and uh, our, uh, our little uh, golden doodle. So we jumped in my car and we headed that direction and we turned on some great music. We listened to mostly uh, uh, oldies rock and roll, uh, classic rock and roll, and, uh, and just traveled and talked and had a great time. And we get to the Salmon Valley, and sure enough, we find the two hot pools that we had planned on. The first one is called Boat Box. And you can look this up on Google. Just just type in Boat Box uh, Salmon River. This is an old, some type of a mining implement that basically is the size of a small hot tub. Okay, it's a, it's a cauldron, if you will. Imagine a, a witch's cauldron. In fact, at, at one point, my, my daughter says, well, I feel like I'm in a witch's cauldron. They're going to come mix me up and, and uh, turn me into something. And uh, we got to, uh, to the uh, Boat Box, and... And uh, we drove past, and there was two people in it. And it, it's not bigger; it's not big enough for more than two people. And we kind of had this idea as we as we drove over there, we would probably end up waiting in line. It would probably be rushed. It probably wouldn't be all it's cut out to be. Well, folks, we could not have been more wrong, thankfully, than we were on the way over. We got there, and yes, there were two people there, and we didn't, you know, road trip, right? We're we're in no hurry, so we pulled into the uh, little pull out, if you will, not really a parking lot, but a pull out off of uh, Highway 75, and uh, we just sat there for about 10 minutes, and they could see that we were there, but we weren't trying to pressure them weren't trying to rush them, but I, I don't know how long they had been there, but they got out in about 10 minutes. And uh, at that point, it was just us. And so we had our swimsuits and we uh, we got down there and got in this uh, thing. And I'm telling you folks, this was the coolest hot springs I've ever been in. And I've been in some really cool hot springs. When I say cool, I mean cool as in, as in neato, not cool as in cold. It was quite the opposite. This thing was, I would guess, about 103 degrees. It felt like a really warm hot tub. Now, folks, by the time we got down there and got into this hot tub, the temperature had dropped to 39 degrees. Yes, 39 Fahrenheit. We're not talking Celsius here. Fahrenheit, 39 degrees. So we're just a few degrees over freezing. Uh, starts to cloud up a little bit. It hadn't rained yet, but it, it was there. It was cold. It was miserable. We got in this hot tub, folks. It was the perfect dichotomy. It's the perfect dichotomy. Now, what do I mean by dichotomy? This is a word that has a meaning. According to the internet, the meaning is a division or contrast between two things that are or are represented as being opposed or entirely different. Okay. Basically, we're talking opposites. Dichotomy, a synonym would be an opposite, okay, or a separation, a gulf, a chasm, a difference. Uh, but basically, it's a thing that you think should be one way, and yet it's something different. 
I love this word dichotomy. It's something I use often in my coaching that, that sometimes we see things for what we think they should be, but in reality, what they actually are are two different things. And that's, that was the case here on the Salmon River. Uh, we, went to, uh, we went to lunch there in a small town, by the way, it's called Stanley. By the way, uh, Stanley is one of the coldest towns in the nation. I remember as a kid, they would often say that the coldest temperature today uh, was in such and such. And the hottest temperature today was in such and such. Hottest temperature typically was, seemed like it was right around Death Valley a lot of times. But when it came to the coldest temperature, often Stanley Basin nailed it. This is a cold, cold place. It's very high in the mountains, very remote. It's your typical remote village, right? I think there's 63 people that live there, according to the sign as we drove in. There's three little cafes and, you know, just not much there. It's a great little town, great little old mining town. We had uh, we had lunch there, and then we went back to another hot springs called Sunbeam. Again, you can look these up, Sunbeam Hot Springs on Salmon River, Boat Box, all one word, Boat Box uh, on uh, the Salmon River Hot Springs. What a great little place. So we get to Sunbeam, and yeah, there was a few there, but it's a lot bigger area. So this is not an actual tub. This is actually a an area cut out of the Salmon River. So you can go there, and people have dug it out, and there's some rocks that you can lean up against and what have you, and you've got the hot water pouring in, and, and I think it's about 110 degrees coming in. Of course, it mixes, it mixes with the river water, right? So it makes it just kind of a perfect temperature. It was actually not quite as hot in Sunbeam as it was in the boat box. Uh, but what a fun little time. So we're laying there we're sitting there in this in this area and there's i don't know six other people in this uh, little tub we got to know some people from boise and uh, a gal from bend uh, oregon and just get to know some people it was a fun little conversation there uh, but the perfect I, I was laying there and i'm looking out and by the way when we were in sunbeam uh, the the clouds uh, came in uh, started to blow and uh, all of a sudden the sleet came on and uh, if you've never been in in hard sleet when i'm talking hard sleet it's right next to hail so it's not rain it's not snow it's it's kind of an icy and it's it's, it's just a weird thing Thing, to be in sleet this you know the wind is picking up and it's starting to blow sideways and these things are like little pinpricks right and it's not in a normal day would not be comfortable here i am in a swimsuit in the middle of 39 degree weather literally next to in this in the in the salmon river i shouldn't say next to in the salmon river the salmon river i don't know what the temperature is but it's somewhere in the 40s i mean this this is freezing cold water and we're sitting here and it's the most beautiful picturesque place you can absolutely imagine. It is just gorgeous. And here I am, just warm as can be. I'm tucked down in the water. It is a very warm bath, if you will. And here I am in, in one of the most miserable, beautiful, but miserable places you can imagine. The perfect dichotomy. Here I am, should be freezing to death, should be so cold, and I was so comfortable, and I was so warm, and it was so beautiful, and it was just a perfect, perfect way to spend our Sunday afternoon. I want to pause here and remind you about a perfect way to spend your time in getting to know your business, getting to know your profession, getting to know the career that we all call real estate appraisal. That perfect place is Working RE Magazine. Folks, I'm telling you, David and Isaac and the whole crew over there at Working RE are working overtime to dig into the real stories about what's going on with our profession. Folks, a lot of the stuff that I bring you right here on this microphone I get from Working RE Magazine. These folks dedicate their lives to getting you the information that you need. And you can be part of their email list for free. Check them out. Go to workingre.com. Again, it's workingre.com. Data Master, of course, is saving appraisers between 30 and 60 minutes on every single report that they do. That's about 45 minutes average on every report that you do. Check it out, folks. In fact, do the math. Find out how, how many reports are you doing per month. I can tell you most of my coaching clients, they start out around 30, 40 uh, per month, and, and we can usually increase that for them. But if you're, doing, if you're doing 30 or 40 reports per month and you're saving 45 minutes per report, I mean, check out. You're saving a week's worth of time, folks. You're saving so much time that either you or someone else is going to have to do. It is a no-brainer. Data Master USA is where you find out more. Data Master or DataMasterUSA.com. Finally, we're sponsored by Alamode Software. Alamode, of course, is the software that is helping appraisers to do more with less. Another dichotomy, right? To do more with less. That's a dichotomy. When you have less, meaning less overhead, meaning less things to worry about, but they help you to do more with that less, that's all a mode for you. All a mode.com or 800 all a mode. Again, it's all a mode.com or 800 all a mode. Welcome back to the program, everyone. Talk about dichotomies today. This word dichotomy basically means opposition. You find yourself in a position 
where, which I did yesterday, sitting in a freezing cold river and staying as warm as can be. That's a perfect dichotomy. When you're sitting there in a swimsuit in 39 degree weather where the snow is falling sideways and it's icicles hitting your face, yet you're as warm and as cozy as you want to be. In fact, you're almost too warm. You get to the point that's like, okay, well, we probably ought to get out now because it's getting a little steamy. Right? It's getting a little warm in here. My, my body temperature needs to regulate a little bit. That's a perfect dichotomy. When you have something that should be one way and yet is the exact opposite. It should be freezing cold, yet it's super toasty warm. I want to share with you another dichotomy that I deal with on a regular basis. And I deal with this in social media. I deal with this when I talk to my colleagues. I deal with this even in coaching clients and such because it's, it's, it's one of these things that it's hard to understand until you've experienced it yourself. It's one of these things that on the offset, it looks like it should be one way. And with your appraisal business is actually the exact opposite. Let me give you that example. And by the way, there's lots and lots of these examples. I would love for anyone who is willing and able to comment down below this episode and share with me some other dichotomies that you find in your business. Things that you think should be one way and yet in reality are the exact opposite. Let me share with you the biggest dichotomy that I have experienced throughout my career. And this is a dichotomy that continues to surprise me, not surprise me, but continues to amaze me. We'll, we'll put it that way. This is a dichotomy that continues to amaze me year after year after year, day after day. And it's this dichotomy that if we increase volume, which we alluded to earlier in the podcast, podcast, that if we increase our volume, that somehow that is supposed to decrease our quality of work. And I hear it all the time, folks. I hear it all the time. Somebody will get brave on one of these uh, public forums and they'll indicate how many appraisals they're doing. Or in, in the case of a recent article that I read about an individual who made 300 and some odd thousand per year as a real estate appraiser. And of course, you know, some people are like, that's cool. That's something to reach for. Well, obviously he doesn't have a wife and a kid. And, you know, obviously, you know, there's this, that and the other. And they try to explain it. And basically we try to explain things because it's not us. Right. And we think, well, you know, if, if it were us, then I would, you know, I would know what's going on here because if it were me, then, then, then this would be happening. Right. I could do that too. If I didn't have a wife and kids. I could do that too if, you know, fill in the blank. But one of the things that I find quite frequently in these situations where somebody says, hey, I'm doing 80 appraisals a month or I'm doing, you know, X amount of money per, per uh, month or per year as a real estate appraiser, if it's different than what they're used to, they immediately go to the default. And the default is, well, yeah, I would love to see one of their appraisal reports. And everybody piles on and says, ha, 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 that's right. I've reviewed some reports like that. And I can tell you for a fact that they're cutting corners, right? As if, as if the reports that you review, you, you know how much, you know, how many they've done that week or how many they did that month or how many did, they did that year, or how much money they're netting or grossing, right? But, but this is what we do as human nature, because if it's different than what we do, somehow, you know, we, we equate that with being wrong. Different equals wrong. And so the dichotomy here is that if somebody is doing more, than, than what we do. If somebody's making more money than what we make, if, if the volume is higher in their office than it is in our office, we immediately equate our business model to that other individual. And then we say, well, that's impossible. Well, it's possible, but you're sure as heck going to be cutting corners, right? This is the understanding that if you, if I do 30 appraisals in a month and you do 50 appraisals in the month, well, there's no way that could be, because I know, I know how much work it is to do 30 appraisals in a month. And I'm just doing the math, folks. If you, if you're doing 30 appraisals in a month and you tell me you're doing 50 appraisals in the month, that's 20 more appraisals. I, I know I can do math. That's 20 more appraisals than I'm doing. And I'm already working 60 hour weeks. There's just no way, unless you're not spending the amount of time that you need to spend on your reports. Therefore, you're cutting corners. Therefore, you're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Therefore, you're fill in the blank. But your quality is in the, the crapper. It has to be. There's no other way that this could work. Well, folks, here's the problem with that. First of all, one of the biggest problems is we are certainly quick to judge things that we don't understand. I've been accused for years and years and years because guess what, folks? I'm the appraiser coach. As it says in the intro, I'm here to teach you how to make more money. And I've received this pushback for years and years and years that if, if somebody's going to make more money, that they've got to cut somewhere. Well, here's the problem. That's not actually true in reality. Let me tell you what is actually true. Here's the dichotomy. I'm a firm believer because I've seen it in my own life and I've seen it in the lives of, of those that I coach, that as your volume increases, the quality of your reports also increases. I know what you think I was going to say. That's the dichotomy. As your volume increases, the quality of your reports also increases. Now, that's not always the truth. Obviously, if you're simply going to use the same business model that you've all always used and you're simply going to add more volume, that's the only change you're going to make. I may, I'm doing 30 appraisals in April and I'm going to do 60 appraisals in May. I promise you folks that the reality of that is going to be low quality reports. There's no doubt in my mind, right? 
the, the difference is, is if you're going to increase your volume long term and you care about quality, there is a way. In fact, there's multiple ways. There's lots of ways to get there. There are ways to get there so that you don't have to decrease quality. And here's the dichotomy. You can actually increase quality. What? How's that possible, Dustin? Let me give you an example or two. Okay. One of the things that I teach is technology. And I teach that technology allows us to be able to do more with less. Now, a couple of the technologies that I talked about today in the sponsorship, and I'll just kind of roll those back in as a, an example of what I'm talking about, is all mode and Data Master. Okay, these are great technologies out there that, yes, they cost money to participate in, right? They're not, they're not a, a charitable foundation. They're a business, and I pay money every month or every year into, into uh, Data Master and Alamode to help me to be more efficient. One of the things that Alamode does for me is it allows me to do mobile. Now, mobile sometimes seems like a step backward to some people. They think, well, if I'm going to be there, I might as well just put it on a piece of paper, and I might as well get, you know, get through the process as best I can in the sense that this is the way I've always done it and it's worked just fine. But if I move to this technology stuff and I, and I put everything in a computer, that somehow that's going to slow me down or somehow that's going to make me less efficient. Folks, it actually does the opposite because when you get back to the office, you're no longer re-inspecting that property. I, I call it inspecting twice, once on the on site and, and another time in front of your computer when you transfer all that data, the sketch, the photos, the information into your computer a second time. Why are we doing this? Right? Data Master, perfect example of you've got to type... Data Master, by the way, does a lot of things. It imports a lot of things. Let's just do one example. Okay, one of the things it imports is the parcel number. Okay, so the subject parcel number is found on county records. Okay, there's a couple of different ways to get that into your report, into your into your uh, software. You can type it yourself. You can copy and paste, or you can use Data Master, and you can hit a button and it will import that. Well, copy and paste is probably better than typing, but only better slightly because it takes time. Okay, Data Master is going to save you in time. But let me tell you what else it will do. And here's why I talk about Data Master actually increasing the quality of your reports. One of the things it will do is avoid human error. So if I'm looking on one screen, and let's say the let's just make it simple. Let's say the uh, parcel number is one two three four. Okay, there's no such parcel number of that I'm sure, but let's just say it is one two three four. So you're looking on one screen one two three four. Okay, you look on the other screen and you type in one two four three. Okay, very simple mistake that can be made by anybody. Okay. And yet it's wrong. You now have the wrong parcel number in there. What if it's more serious? What if it's square footage? What if it's year built? What if it's something that affects value? Okay, that that mistake will actually cause you to choose the wrong comps, to make the wrong adjustments, to to go clear to the end of the row where you could have saved yourself lots of heartache by using technology. Okay, another another thing that I have a tendency to do because I'm old and clumsy is fat finger something. So if it's one two three four as the parcel number, I might accidentally hit one twice or one two two four or or one two two three four because I I actually accidentally hit another key. It happens all the time, folks. We all do it. And if we don't catch our mistake, if we don't double check our mistake, well, we've got a problem. One of the things that Data Master can do is help you to import whatever is actually in that tax report is actually going to go in the in the uh, uh, appraisal report. Now, you may very well have bad information as far as tax information or as far as MLS information, but that's on the information. That's not on the technology. Okay. And if, and if it's going to be wrong with the technology, it's also going to be wrong with the human error as well, because you're simply copying and pasting in to the report. That's a perfect example of the way technology can help you right paying a little money into a, a into a system a company such as Alamode or a company such as Data Master can help you to actually save money because it saves you time and so many appraisers think of this dichotomy as well I'm not going to I'm not going to spend more I can get I can get another software for cheaper I can I cannot use Data Master and I can save money well really can you or is there a dichotomy and furthermore things like Alamode and Data Master will allow you to do more volume now, with the new volume, does that have to decrease your quality? I would say the exact opposite can happen. Let me give you another quick example. I'm a big believer in human resources. I'm a big believer in delegation. Now, most people, when they hear that, don't understand what I'm talking about. And I get a lot of flack in social media, and I get a lot of flack from people like BJ, the fake BJ. Um, Billy, you know who you are, who, who don't understand what I do. And they jump on, and they, and they criticize this and criticize that. Or, you can't do six or seven appraisals in a day. And he uses some quote that I had some years ago and, and, uh, and, and makes all kind of comments about, uh, about what he thinks he knows to be the truth, where he really doesn't know a thing. Let me give you an example of how your human resource can actually increase your quality. People tend to think that if you increase volume, let's say you're doing 30 appraisals in a month and you go hire a uh, quality control individual, okay, somebody who's going to check over your reports. Maybe they're in office. Maybe they're not in. Maybe they're a 1099. Maybe they're a W-2. It doesn't matter, right? The bottom line is you've hired somebody to look over your reports. Now, some would say, well, that's a cost. Some would say, well, that's going to take more time. Or will it? 
If you've got somebody checking over your reports before you turn them into your client, is there not a very good chance that less revision requests are going to come back? I would absolutely say the answer to that is of course. Of course that's going to be the case, right? In my office, we never, ever, ever send out a report, a final report, not a final, but a final appraisal report, the end of the appraisal report. The last thing we do is send it out to the client. That never happens before at least three sets of eyes take a look at that appraisal report. Three sets, folks. Not one, not two, but three different people have to look at that report and check it off before it goes out the door. Now, some would say, well, that's just going to increase time, or will it? Is it easier or harder to have another individual look through a report before it gets sent out so that we end up lowering our revision requests? I can tell you from experience, folks, that it will do the, the latter and not the former. And this is one of those dichotomies that we deal with when people think that because you have increased your volume, that you have actually decreased your quality. And, they, and they're absolutely convinced of it. Why? Because they've probably tried it. They probably used the same business model that they've used for 30 years and say, well, you know, maybe I can do this too. And they jump out there and they say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to accept 10 more orders this month than I did last month. I'm not going to turn as much work down. And all of a sudden they're, they're upside down in their quality. They're upside down. And so, and so when they hear of someone else doing the same thing, their immediate reaction is, well, I've done that before. And I know that doesn't work. If you're going to increase your volume, you're going to absolutely decrease your quality. Well, folks, I found the exact opposite to, to be true. And one of the ways is by increasing my delegation, it allows me, now stick with me on this, it's a hard concept sometimes to understand. But if you understand it, if you grasp it, it will absolutely change the way that you do business. Absolutely change the way that you do business. And it is this. If you can delegate the stuff, and I'm going to call it brainless work, sorry, it is, if you can delegate the brainless work to someone else, yes, you're going to check it over. Yes, you're going to audit it. Yes, you're going to quality control check them. Yes, you're going to supervise. Yes, you're going to find, train. And I mean, there's so much else that goes into this. Don't simplify it. Don't just say that you can delegate stuff out and somehow that's going to save you time and, and, and money and allow you to have higher quality because that's not the case unless you do it correctly. And that's the key here. But if you do it correctly, that frees you up as an appraiser to be a damn appraiser. Let me repeat that. When you delegate the $10, $12, 15 hour, dollar an hour work to someone else, that frees you up to concentrate on what you're actually needed for. That might be, in your case, choosing comps, making adjustments, doing the inspection. But it may not be going to the county records, pulling the plat map, pulling the zoning map, putting that information into the computer, making sure that it's in the right spot scheduling, answering phones, email. There's so many things that you can delegate. Folks, you've, used, you've heard me use this analogy before. I'll use it again. It's the doctor's office analogy. When you go to the doctor, nobody complains when the doctor doesn't greet them in the lobby. Nobody complains when the doctor doesn't take their blood pressure, their weight, and their temperature before you go into that little room. Nobody even complains when it's a PA that comes through that door first before the doctor comes later. Nobody complains. Nobody complains when you don't pay your bill that someone other than the doctor calls you and says, hey, uh, what can we do to get a payment here? Nobody complains that all of these things are delegated because they understand that the doctor is the professional and that the doctor needs to focus on doctoring. Let that sink in. Are you focused on appraisal or are you doing data entry? Are you focused on the really important matters of an appraisal business? Or are you taking care of the phones? Can you truly do an inspection when your cell phone rings and you take it? Can you really focus on what you need to do as an appraiser when every two seconds you're getting interrupted with a little ding chime on your computer because there's another bid request out there that you need to respond to or else it's going to go to some schmuck down the road? Can you really focus on being a professional when you're so busy with all of the $10, $12, and $15 an hour work? Folks, that is a dichotomy. So next time you hear some appraiser say that I do six appraisals in a, in a day, and they say that's absolutely impossible, would you please step back and say, how is it possible, rather than it's not possible? Folks, I'm telling you, I have helped so many appraisers to grasp this concept but not only understand the concept, but to start to implement it. There are so many great tools, so many great principles of small business that you can and should utilize that will allow you to work less hours and make more money. Another dichotomy. So next time you are worked to death, next time you're sitting there on a Saturday afternoon where you would rather be outside playing, I want you to imagine Dustin Harris in this hot tub next to, <laughs> well, don't imagine that too closely. I was there with my daughter, folks. Come on, keep it clean. But Dustin Harris in this warm tub of water next to a freezing cold river. That's a dichotomy. There are so many dichotomies in our business in so many ways that we can overcome those 
do better, create more value for others, and at the same time, make more money at it. I want to teach you how to do that, folks, and you can be a part of my all-star team today for absolutely free. Check them out. Go to theappraisercoach.com. Click on memberships. Okay. Free 30 All-Star. Free 30 All-Star. It's the number three zero, no spaces, all caps. Free 30 All-Star. Spend 30 days there. I promise it will change your life. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. You know, we, we equate that with being wrong. Different equals wrong. And so the... the, the, the sorry, editor. <laughs>